What's up and welcome back everyone. Well, we haven't done battle belts in a while, so how about we do a battle belt loadout? And today I'll be sharing my loadout on the upcoming Bees Combat System IO belt. And there's a lot of badass bits on this belt that you're gonna wanna see. All right, let's do it. So first off, yes, I'm working on the actual Bees Combat System IO belt review, and I'll have that to you soon to show off what all this belt can do. But I figured it would be easier to break up the actual like loadout and the belt review itself, kind of like what we did on the GBRS belt. God, that belt sucked. And thankfully, the IO belt actually has the hook and loop facing in the correct direction, so that's a good first start. So a little bit about Bees Combat System. They've actually been around for quite some time, but I found it interesting that so many people in the tactical industry or the tactical community had never actually heard of them before. So, who is Bees? Bees Combat Systems focuses on laser cut designs that align around the KISS principle of making gear simple and removing excess bits. Their mantra is that tactical is a mindset, not an equipment list. And Bees Combat System really surprised me because they're not so in your face like all these other Instagram gear companies that try to sell you that their company is somehow out there like saving the world. You're sewing together nylon, bro. Calm down. But by Bees being not as vocal, I've really kind of missed out on what they've been up to all this time. And I think after you see some of this belt load out, you're gonna see that some of those other gear companies are watching what Bees is doing pretty closely and emulating what Bees is doing, which is really surprising. So hopefully by me showing you some of this, we can fix some of the poop disaster that whatever Bees marketing department is. And then some of you out there can actually see some of this stuff and not buy the half-ass copied version. Trust me, you're gonna see some similarities. All right, let's get started and we'll start from the weak side and work our way around. The first bit I added onto here are the HES, or Handgun Elastic Single. These use two layers of elastic that is then wrapped on the outside by the fabric enclosure that can then be in different colors. Here I use the Atax IX, and it's the same color I used throughout the belt setup. The top of the pouch also includes eyelets for connecting in mag retention lanyards if you need that added mag security. I don't need those, but you could add them. But hold up, this pouch looks familiar. Like, super, super familiar. And yeah, I swore I saw this exact design before, because here we have the Axle Advanced Node Pouch, which also has what looks like the exact same double elastic retention with outside flap design. The only real difference is how the lanyard attaches and the Tigris on the back. So when did the HES from Bees come out? It looks like January of 2022. So then the Node Pouch was released February of 2022? Uh... Uh... Well, somebody at Axel obviously worked at Bees before, and it's a good example of what we talked about before, but let's get back to the pouch. The rear of the HES has half-inch laser cuts along the entire length of the rear pouch. This allows you to connect into the more odd width molly bands on battle belts, or just skip it and use it in a regular molly width. Also included on every pouch are the tabs with these aggressive side cuts on each side. This allows you to easily feed the tab in and have it lock into position on its own. And I owe a pizza to whoever designed this because it's absolutely genius. Not only do I not need any extra bits to connect everything up, but it's simple, effective, and holds everything in place really well. Looking at the mag retention itself, we see the elastic pouches do a good job of holding our larger SIG mag and additionally have no issues with 2011 staccato mags. Retrieval of the pistol mags was fast and easy, and I also had no issues with re-indexing. And normally, I don't really love elastic mag pouches, but I found that I really did like this design a lot, <laughs> just like I did on the axle node pouch. Moving down the belt, we'll see the next edition of the Ares V pouch. This mimics the design of the HES with the same two elastic bands and the outer cover and eyelets for retention. One difference you'll see are the additional laser cut slots in the front 
If you wanted to add in an additional pistol mag in this position or tourniquet pouches, multi-tool pouches, or whatever you want. And these are for AR-15 mags. If you wanted to use AK mags, you'd use the AKS mag pouches. Here, I'll show you those so you know exactly what I'm talking about if you wanna find them yourself. See, I'm telling you, Bees has all kinds of stuff that you've probably never heard of. The Ares V pouch has similar retention to the pistol mag pouches we just saw, and I found they work really well to keep the mag held in position and then also re-index super cleanly. They're on par with S-TAC, and that says a lot that I'm even willing to say that on camera. The one thing I like also is that the exposed mag is about the perfect amount for the proper coke can grip, so you can easily grab the mags to perform rapid reloads. It's a super small touch, but you can tell the designer like really spent the time to make sure the mag sat at that perfect height. It's just impressive to take so much time on such a small thing. On the rear of the pouch are the same half inch cuts, so you can use different belt molly width, like we saw previously, along with the same attachment tabs to make it all simple to connect in. For the record, I'm loving it so far. Next, we have the Bees Combat Systems dump pouch. The dump pouch rolls up nicely and has a front loop tab on the outside for whatever patches you may want on there. It connects in the same way as we've seen with the included tabs and smaller space laser cuts to fit a belt better. The entire system deploys easily as you just pull up on the tab, then reconnect it into the side of the pouch. Here you get an absolute ton of real estate, and I was able to easily fit in a full combat load of seven mags into this pouch. One of the tricks also is that there is a bungee at the top to secure all the contents by tightening this bungee tab. And this is often overlooked. Like, what's the point of putting a ton of stuff in there if it's just gonna go spraying out and around everywhere once you start running around it all? This enclosure is smart, smart, smart. Moving down, I've included the IFAC blunt. This actually attaches a bit differently by using the attached hook and loop to wrap around the belt system, and then it can still integrate into the inner belt loop system of the IO belt. It also comes included with a tab, like if you wanted to attach that as an actual dangler instead, you could easily do that. I'm gonna have to give you the basics on this thing though, because I could probably do a whole video on just this IFAC pouch. But let's do this. The front straps hide an area to hold and retain a pair of shears with an elastic portion underneath to hold a tourniquet. Flipping to the rear, we also have a spot to hold a Sharpie or whatever writing utensil you wanna carry with you. And all this seems small, but now you have the ability to write all like the data you need on your actual tourniquet and it's all in one package. The sides of the pouch are cinched down by these pull tabs on both sides to keep the contents from just pouring out. And I've used some other med kits with a similar design that aren't enclosed on the side. And what can happen is you can run around and then everything just dumps out and it just makes for a wonderful problem. Next are the included tabs, which allow you to hang the entire IFAC on an IV pole or whatever you have handy. Opening up the pouch, we see internal bungee retention to store and organize an absolute ton of IFAC equipment. And I see a ton of IFACs and danglers. And a lot of time it's just one big pouch and all you can really do is just throw all your junk in there. And that's generally pretty stupid and it sucks really bad if you're in an actual emergency and you need something particular. The IFAC lets you have it all neat and organized and then hung up if you wanna do that. And again, I've never heard of this before and Bees is just absolutely killing the IFAC game. Continuing on, we have our Bees Beofang Gridlock Radio Pouch. This pouch has the same attachment elements we've seen throughout with the ability to be done in a ton of colors. This pouch is interesting as it consists of two parts, the bottom to hold and secure the radio base and then the top enclosure tab. Putting the radio in is easy as you place the bottom of the radio in and then close the top enclosure. I then cinch down the bottom bungee to hug the radio a little more tightly. This keeps the radio secure while also giving me access to the side of the radio for PTTs or manual transmit. The two-part design also makes it easy to use varying size radio, as the Beofang with the smaller size battery can be adjusted to fit perfectly along with my Olenko DMR. From a radio pouch design? I'm pretty impressed by the simplicity of the fabric, but the complexity of the actual design. 
Next on our belt, we have our Blackhawk holster with level three retention for our Staccato 2011P with a Holosun 509T and a Surefire X300UB model. And if you've not searched for 2011 holsters, I can tell you right now, it's an absolute pain. And level three, yeah, that's super rare. The Blackhawk works by pushing in two locking tabs. The first tab opens the hood to release the hold on the optic, and the second releases an internal tab on the X300 light. So yes, the X300 is actually a requirement for this setup. I tried to use a Safariland QLS and was saddened to learn it doesn't fit. Additionally, doing any draws without a leg strap makes this holster totally fall on its face. So I made sure to order one of those also. So, the jury's out on the holster until the leg strap comes in, but I really do wish I could just use like a Vastus by Nine Toes and just call it a day because that setup is comfy as hell. Finally on our belt, we have our last one with our multi-tool pouch. This again uses all the same attachment and retention methods as all the others and with all the same unique colorways Bees offers on the site. Here we see the multi-tool pouch can easily fit in a variety of multi-tools thanks to the adjustable height of the entire pouch. It's pretty snazzy, it's simple, and it just works. But I think that's it. Well, I did add in a Haley Strategic Anything hook to add in some cool gloves. But somebody out there, help me find some Atex IX gloves. I can't find them. Well, I hope by sharing with you some of this Bees gear and showing you how I have my Bees IO belt loaded out, it's helped you in some ideas to help you in your belt loadout. Stay tuned as we dig into the Bees IO belt and see where it stacks up on our list in the full review. I know I'm excited to test this one out and see how it does, along with some other secret ones that are right around the corner. Oh, one more thing, I did notice on Bee's website that they actually have some thermal hides also. I didn't even know they had that. So I think I'm gonna grab one of those and test that out and compare it to some of the ones we already did. I'm just super curious to see how it does. But, so stay tuned for that. I do wanna say thanks though to all of our Patreon supporters and all of our YouTube members. You make all this possible that we see all this cool stuff and all these belt loadouts and maybe even some extra thermal hides. And I do wanna say thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below, what was the coolest part of this Bees IO belt loadout? All right, everyone, watch out. All right, Bees marketing department. Got it? Seriously, that bee's thermal hide? I'm gonna go order right now.